All right. As I say, this is my standard manner presentation. We will go through it. Um, we will discuss in vitamin A and general malnutrition, vitamin A is itself, the characteristics of the product, and some comparisons with another product. The development work we uh, VTR has done both in vivo and in vitro. And from that, I think that we can draw some conclusions. So to center this discussion, and I uh, ask excuses if these are known material, but I think we have to go through. That is my, my habit. We will discuss beta manains. And to understand what beta manains are, we have to understand the cell structure, vegetable cell structure, because uh, beta manains come from vegetable cells, and how the different components of the cells influence or non-nutrition, anti-nutritional factors, and where the today's topic comes from, which is the manains. So, in terms of plant carbohydrates, we have two different areas we can draw these carbohydrates. One is the cell content, and another one is the cell walls. In the cell content, we have nutritional support or nutrition uh, supply, like a starch, energy, or sugars, oligosaccharides, fructan, polysaccharides, and resistant starch. Depending on that, we have hydrosoluble, structural, and structural carbohydrates with more or less capacity to be digested. And this influences, of course, the fate of these carbohydrates within the intestine and the different places where these carbohydrates are absorbed and the different dynamic absorption dynamics each of those carbohydrates can have. On the other hand, cell wall contains um, most anti-nutrients we find in, in vegetable cells. We can uh, classify them in beta-glucanes, pectins, hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin polyphenols. Uh, the interested area today is the hemicellulose, the glucomanans are the most uh, important part of our topic today. I think it is also interesting to understand the complexity of the cell complex, to be redundant, uh, from vegetables and particularly from grains. We have here a maize kernel with its different sex sections, segments. And we have an um, uh, increasing size of the cortical area from this square, from which we can understand the different kinds of fibers we can extract from this point. We see that, for instance, from the hemicellulose fraction, we can have xylanes, we can have arabinanes and galactomanines. And from other areas, we can have cellulose, lignin, or pectin. What we are interested in today is this path that takes us to galactomanans and uh, the required enzyme to degrade those. They are endomanans of alpha galactosidase, depending on the on the bone we want to degrade. All of those enzymes that are run here are the required for what is called total fiber degradation. You may understand that in many circumstances, using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different enzymes, eight different enzymes might not be technologically or economically justifiable because the amount of uh, byproducts on this file might not be economically um, adequate. So we most times, we reduce ourselves in using silanases, mananases, and probably beta-glucanases. This is to center the discussion in today's. And another thing is, what are the proportions of these NSPs and antinutrients coming out from grains in the different raw materials we might be using in, in our diets? This is a pretty recent review from Gomez in, published in 2020 into dividers, the non stat polysaccharides of different uh, raw materials, feedstuffs, in insoluble, insoluble, and in total amounts for silos, arabinose, arabinoxylanes, glucose, cellulose, or gluco galactomanans, and the total amount. And we see, I've put it on here as a model of corn with 0.14% of mannose content, which contains 0.28 and barley 0.31. Uh, rice is very low, oats are very low, millet is twice as high as corn, and triticale is 0.42, which is three times higher than. So the first conclusion is the amount of galactomanans in corn, for instance, is relatively low as compared to the cereals. So we think, for instance, European type diets containing barley and containing wheat and containing triticale, we understand that probably the use of 
of uh, beta mananase would be very interesting to increasing these uh, diets performance. On the other hand, besides cereals, we also have um, fibrose ingredients and proteins. Soybean meal has been taken as the, um, let's say the model for glucose manans in animal nutrition. If we don't take into account, for instance, um, palm kernel meal or copra meal that's much richer in glucomanans, but they are different quality. We're going to see it afterwards. In the case of soy meal, it's, it's almost 1%. And of course, full fat soy is just a delusion of soybean meal is 0.78. But look at canola meal and sunflower meals. There are two meals that they are used also in European type diets that sum up to the amount of glucomanans that they are existing in cereals in Europe. Therefore, for European perspective, we should declare that using beta mananase is a good nutritional tool to improve those diets' performance when using those raw materials. In our case, we have to concentrate on soybean meal and full fat soy as, more, as main sources of glucomanase. Uh, wheat brands so or gluten meal is, is a concentration from corn. Therefore, we can expect an increase in, in mananase. Rice bran is relatively low, and the DGS is another concentration from corn, which is basically a lot of protein and fiber, and therefore the amount of mannose is 10 times higher than that of, um, that of corn kernel, corn grains. Therefore, if anyone which is formulating a diet containing DGS, that would be a good idea, to add vitaminins because in this concentration from corn, we will find those anti-nutrients in this in this diet. Okay, metamanane actually in general terms is a polymer. It's a fraction of fiber, it's a polymer of mannose which are being, are being linked to galactose or glucose at different proportions. The basic mannose link is beta 1,4 and all the sugars are linked to beta 1,6. Beta mananase, is specific for this link and beta mananase is not attacking this link which the uh, alpha galactosidase enzyme is required to depolymerize this link. Uh, beta mananase, as I said, is a, is a polymer and there is one factor that implies or impacts the solubility and therefore the interference they have with nutrition. Depending on the degree of substitutions, we might have these mannose galactose ratio that makes them more or less soluble. High substitution rates 20 to 1, sorry, low substitution rates 20 to 1 means that the, this manane is crystal type, usually it's not soluble, and uh, its uh, low digestibility is the main component, the main interference with nutrition. On the other hand, soybean meal and guargam. Guaragam is put here as a model. So the meal has a substitution rate one, one eight to one, that is almost two molecule sugars um, to galactose is highly soluble and therefore interferes in terms of solubility. Uh, we have mannans in wheat, rice, bran, corn, farbin, but sesame meal, oats, sorghum, and soybean meal. This is the mannans in NSPs. And the total manan content is palm kernel and copra meal. We have mentioned before that this is, these are the highest raw materials containing most manans. And we have sesame meal, soybean meal, and soy being uh, 44 or 48, depending on the concentration. We see that cereals and brands have relatively low um, content of manans. Brands are used in relatively low amounts in diets, therefore we do not add too much. Uh, <clears throat> cereals are added in high proportions, but its content is low. Therefore, the total amount in the final feed is not very high. What are the problems that vitamins cause in animal nutrition? We have mentioned here that we can have two different type of problems linked to vitamins. One is digestive effect, another one is immunitary effect, immunity effect. Digestive effects are linked in two basic questions. One is digestibility, net digestibility. Crystal manains from palm kernel meal is low digestible. Therefore, we have to modify the diet 
to account for this amount of fiber coming with the ingredient. And soluble manners, what we do, what they do is interfering with nutrient absorption. Uh, we know from other um, fibers that increasing gut viscosity is a problem because water capturing, because lack of enzyme access to the, to the um, intestinal content, increased transit time that may cause disturbances with microbia, for instance, and therefore lack of nutrient absorption. Therefore, increasing viscosity is something negative, and this is associated to soluble manans. And those manans are those found in soya bean meal. And on the other hand, manose as itself, as a sugar, is an extreme sugar for the animal uh, environment, for the animal metabolism. It is normally linked to microbial structures. And this is the base by, because of animals are reacting to mannose as a potential antigen. There is a cause of a mannose receptor in cells, basically in dendritic cells in the intestine, that react to mannose as it was a microbia. And therefore, it starts a primary immunity re immunitary reaction that puts the organism into a constant uh, status of reacting to microbial activity. And this, of course, wastes energy, wastes protein, and limits the amount of nutrients for the animal growth. This is basically, these are basically the two main effects of manos. If we can degrade um, manans and we can avoid the problem, we would be avoiding this. This has been made as guar germ, guar holes, as, um, as a trial to determine the impact of viscosity in the intestine with the growth of chickens, so of the uh, nutrient absorption, in this case, glucose and maltose, and we see that the absorption of glucose when it is combined with manane decreases in every case. So we can expect decrease in nutrient absorption in the case of soluble manans, whether they are guar, whether they are soybean meal, when supplied to animals. And this is one of the primary effects of manose, mananae, mananae, sorry, to avoid this interference with uh, nutrition. In terms of uh, immunitary reactions, a recent paper from Arsenal and Kogut studied the response, the genetic response of an organism to beta manains, and they found that they were a number of peptides that are involved in regulation of immunitary systems increased when manains were supplied to the diet. For instance, 15 peptides linked to activation of immune response were found in, in manan trade animals against the controls. 20 for innate immune response, 25 peptides for positive regulation of response to immune stimuli. So we have evidence that manins by themselves are able to enhance the immunitary response when there is no need. And this is just a waste of resources for the animal to grow. So this is the secondary path of immunity reactions with manins. Mananase is the enzyme which has been developed to counteract those effects. Mananase, as I mentioned before, is specific for the beta-1 full link between mannose uh, molecules. It is not active against the 1,6-alpha that is specific for alpha-galactosidase. Therefore, uh, it is might be a good idea in combining beta-mananase and alpha-galactosidase to break down manains and obtain these galactose molecules. We have two different ways we can obtain energy out of the galactose or glucose, or we can create prebiotics in the intestine. Prebiotic, of course, is a substrate for microbial development, and uh, um, we will favor gut health and we will favor all the processes within the, the intestine. In soluble beta manains, the degradation of polysaccharides, of course, by reducing intestinal viscosity, will allow better nutrient absorption. This is basically what is the activity on um, of beta manains on beta uh, man beta mananase on beta manane, Sorry, when those are soluble from the. Uh, 
immunity standpoint, the activity of this enzyme is basically reducing of chronic inflammation status associated to manane content molecules and therefore reducing the waste in energy and protein that this means for the animal. Uh, there are several beta mananase products in the market. And uh, although this is an application for marketing and it's a little bit away from what is usually a technical, a technical uh, presentation, we have to recognize that many times technicians tend to study the product characteristics depending on the, on the data the manufacturers supply us to evaluate. And I have taken three different mananases from the market. Those are worldwide mananases, VTR, um, mananase we're going to call it H, and another mananase where I'm going to call it C. And I'm concentrating into activity, activity per gram. If we just look at the activity, we see that a mananase C declares it 100 units per gram, and it is recommended at 250 to 500 gram per ton feed. Mananase H, says it's 158,888 units, and it is recommended at 400 gram per ton. And mananase VTR can have different concentrations, so we can 1,000 or 2,000 um, units per gram, and it is recommended for this product at 130 to 150 gram per ton. Now, the question a technician looking at this data would ask itself is, how it goes? How is it possible that there is so many different units and uh, how is it done this? The question is that we have to correlate units to the way of method those units are calculated. For mananase C, a unit of beta mananase is defined by the amount of enzyme required to release one micromole per minute of reducing sugars at pH six and 50 degrees Celsius. For mananase H, the unit is defined the amount of enzyme required to release 0.72 microgram per minute of reducing sugar from a mannose containing substrate, pH 7.5 and 40 degrees Celsius. And VTR defines mananase units, depolymerizing beta mannan from locust bean gum, so they define exactly the substrate, in one minute, releasing one millimole of mannose instead of reducing sugars, they are more specific, 55 degrees Celsius, and pH from 4.8 to 5. So <clears throat> we should have a transformation effort to understand how these mananases align themselves within the environments of understanding a common base for its activity. So with that, what I did was ask in VTR to do their own, their own analysis on the three enzymes so that we can have a common activity. And it happens that 1,000 VTR is 256 in this case, 121 in this case, and then the dosages again align to the model. So if it is five times, this is almost five times. So we can see that we can find certain activity. So when evaluating beta mananases, we have to take into account the, convert, the converting activity. 158,000 activity is equal to more or less 200 activity of beta mananase or VTR. So we have to take this into account when studying different mananases in activity. How do uh, VTR develop the beta mananase? Beta mananase was developed with in vitro and in vivo activity. Uh, the in vitro mananase was done by a simulator of digestion in, in animals. This is an automatic system that allows us to modify all the conditions in digestion, both in temperature, pH, enzymes, and time, to determine beta mananase activity in different substrates. This is just a laboratory effort, but I wanted to I wanted to show you the way we do that in in vitro efforts. And we found interesting things related to beta mananase, VTR beta mananase. To begin with is uh, activity evolution according to um, temperature from 30 to 70 degrees Celsius. 
being 55 degrees the standard reference, at 40, 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, the activity increases and then decreases. We know that enzymes have a maximum temperature activity and they have a maximum pH activity. In this case, the temperature is standardized as 55, 53. And pH activity, and this is interesting, from four to six, we can obtain 100% level when a standard dies at pH five. If pH reduces, like for instance, in the gastric environment, net activity of vitamin A increases by two times. This is important because we have to match enzyme activity to the uh, intestinal segment in the animal, which is the area where the activity is done. Therefore, Stability with pepsin and trypsin is important. Pepsin and trypsin are proteases. And beta mananase is a protein. Therefore, if the product is not protease stable, it will, it will lose activity. So we see here the stability in pepsin and trypsin in gastric and intestinal juice, adding beta mananase in liquid form, heating for 37 for 30, 60, or 90 minutes, you have the time here, and assessing residual activity. At 37 degrees Celsius, 30 minutes, even in contact with the gastric or intestinal juice, and gastric juice contains also hydrochloric acid, which is there for precipitating proteins, 90, 92%. 60 minutes is 85 and 90, and 90 minutes of contact is 82 with gastric juice, in 93% recovery time in intestinal juice. Intestinal juice, of course, is pH, is higher pH, has no uh, gastric acid, and therefore the activity on the protein is lower than which happens in the stomach. But in any terms, it is quite resistant. And another important point taken into account, this is going to be put through uh, feed industry, is resistance to metal ions. Metal ions, they are current in premixes. This is done in a particular way. This is in liquid form, one millimole concentration of ions, mananase added, and put it 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Premixes are in dry form, mananase is in dry form. So uh, the effect of dry against dry is much lower than that, but this is intrinsic, uh, intrinsic resistance of mananase to ion interference, copper, iron, iron two and three, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, uh, carbonate in hand, and um, copper and, and zinc. And we see that from 73 to 121% resistance when in contact with ions in premixes in liquid form at 50 degrees Celsius. So we can declare also that this mananase is resistant in contact with premixes uh, from the moment it has been produced. So if the resistance is as such in liquid form, in intimate contact with ions, I don't have any doubt that in dry form, in dry premixes, mananase is going to be uh, totally stable and can be distributed between different plants already premixed into premixes. The pH question is important because we have to relate pH activity with animal pH. I've used here the poultry model. And uh, this is the evolution of pH within the poultry intestine. We see that the pH activity is much higher here in the acid stomach. We can think in poultry, we can think also in, in pigs, because pigs do have um, low pH in the, in the stomach area. But if we correlate pH in different compartments in the intestine with pH activity in mananase, we will see that in proventriculus and gizzard, mananase activity will be the highest because it correlates with low pH. While in the moment it goes to diodenum and acidity is, is, um, is, is, in, acidity is reduced, uh, alkalinity is increased, pH 5 and 6, 
mananase is not affected. So we can expect the effect of mananase going through the whole intestine, as opposed to, for instance, phytase, into which activity is just concentrated on the stomach because of the ability of uh, phytate to precipitate at pHs higher than 4.5. Therefore, in phytase, we can we have to concentrate activity just in the gastric area. In mananase, we can have activity all around the intestinal segment. Then there is also feed manufacturing and temperature stability, which is absolutely important because most of the diets we're dealing with are going to be uh, pelleted. So we have, the, we have done here stability studies. And again, we have compared with two different um, market mananases. This is VTR and this is H mananase, this is VTR and C mananase. We have done 70% uh, moisture and then 70, 85 and 90 degrees Celsius heating for 10 minutes. Um, or in this one is 85 degrees for variable time. There is little differences in temperature stability but in both methods. We find that H is um, marginally inferior, but we can say there's no statistical differences. C is a little bit less stable in the two methods, but not many large differences between the two products. So basically in terms of resistance, we can declare that very, very, very similar. In, in, the two, in the two methods. So we're going to validate the concept in, in vivo trials. Many times we assume that interference with manains from a nutri uh, for the nutrition stand is avoiding nutrient absorption and therefore we can assign some energy or some, some matrices to uh, the diet we are formulating with them. But in other, in other circumstances, we might be interested not into using a matrix, but into boosting the uh, feed performance in the animals. That's what we did with this first trial, and we, we evaluated mananase in two different circumstances. One was using an energy matrix to the diet, and another using uh, mananase on top. The experimental was done in this experimental unit using ROS308 chickens in a factorial two by two designed. Two energy densities, the current density required by ROS chickens <coughs> in a reduced density diet and both with and without. So it's a classical, it's a classical Latin square design. The diets for information contained 28%, 26%, and 24% soybean meal, 48% in every one of the three stages the trial was divided into. The base energies for these diets was 3,000, 3,100, and 3,200 kilocalories. That were the energy aviogen sets for average raw chickens at the time of this experiment was done. There were in total 1,792 chickens, 42 days, and the treatments were nil and 130 ppm mananase. As a summary of the trial, this is body weight evolution by week, and this is FCI evolution by week. And we have the control diet, low energy diet, without and with mananase. And we can observe that we have a <clears throat> not significant, but trending increase in body weight gain when mananase is added to the control diet, so 100% energy. We observed as well that we have a significant reduction in weight gain in the low energy diet without any mananase. We observed that adding mananase to a low energy diet increases body weight to equalize it to the control diet. This is, this is in terms of body weight. But in terms of FCR, we observed that adding mananase to the 
fully compliant diet, this is the blue bars, control plus mananase, achieves the best feed efficiency. The low energy diet with mananase equals the feed FCR from the control diet. But this is a very interesting point because we can have here two different strategies or approaches. One is we can reduce diet cost and equalize performance, or we can go for increasing profit, increasing um, animal performance by making those animals more efficient. <clears throat> And uh, the secondary research in morphometry reveals an enlargement of the muscular thickness. This is clearly an increase on, on uh, immunitary reactions made on liquids and cells into the muscular because of the immunitary effect. And at the same time, we also saw that crypt was statistically significantly reduced and this impacted velus grip ratio. So we are able to observe nutritional effects and immunitary effects in this, uh, in this trial. And so we observe that adding mananase to a diet can have two different approaches. To test that again, we did a secondary validation in another area in a different setting with different uh, type of birds. It was done in, in Peru with Hubbard chickens. Also, a two by two factorial design. In this case, they were using soybean meal, 44%, and the amount of soy in the diets increased correlatively. But the protein, the crude protein, and, and um, essential amino acid levels in this trial was identical to the other trial, three, <clears throat> three stages as well, the same level of energy. 42 days, in this case, using 150 ppm mananase in the diet. And the results shown exactly in the same way we did in the previous trial. What we saw here is, again, the same effect in terms of body weight added to a controlled diet, not significant, but numerically superior. The lower performance on the low energy diet and 100 kilocalorie less diet with mananase was able to compensate for the control diet with full energy specifications. In the previous in the previous trial and in this trial, the low energy diet contained 100 kilocalorie less. If we go to FCR, although we didn't see here the significant effect on the control diet plus mananase, it is numerically lower than the control. And again, the negative control diet was the worst performing of all diets and the low energy diet, 100 kilocalorie energy less with mananase was able to match the FCR, diet, FCR data from, from this control diet. So the third step in mananase was comparing. We set up to compare using uh, the same experimental unit, using the same experimental design, but instead of testing BTR mananase only, we tested H mananase and C mananase together at the recommended doses in the same diet. So in this case, again, three stages, 28 to 24% SBM. 48%, 100 kilocalorie metabolizable energy, energy less, and these four treatments in this case, sorry, five treatments, control, negative control. And these are the results we achieved. Positive control, negative control, 100 kilocalorie less, significant differences at the end of the rating period, positive control, and the three mananases had exactly the same performance. Very small variations within them, they were not significant. In terms of FCR, we observed in this case, a negative control diet again was, as expected, the least performing with lower body weight, high FCR, and the three mananase products placed on the low energy diet, were able to match again FCR in um, the control 
fully specifications energy diet. So what we can see from this point is all three melanases are pretty similar. There is one point to mention, given to the reduced number of animals, these diets were supplied in meal form. So we cannot account for any differences in thermal resistance between these three products. Added in meal form at uh, 130, 500 and 400, there were no differences in performance between these three uh, products. We haven't as yet tested thermal resistance between these three products. What we had also was an industrial trial in an integrated poultry producer that used 350,000 chickens per treatment using H mananase and VTR mananase. H mananase was added at 400 ppm on top in pre start and starts and a VTR 130. Uh, this was added at 100, 400 ppm with a 60 kilocalorie metabolizable energy matrix in the three final diets. The matrix for VTR diet was exactly 130 ppm. These were the parameters in final weight, intake FCR, adjusted FCR to weight, and mortality parameters. Pretty similar from the performance standpoint. But in terms of feed cost and application cost at the end, the profit per bird increased for the VTR product in, against the H product. So we have clearly here two different questions. One is the FCR and another one probably it has to be uh, also computed into the calculations who were not revealed the product cost per ton feed. And this is what they reported on this trial. But in any case, with the difference between diets of 60 kilocalories here and 100 kilocalories in the experimental, these results we see here are pretty much similar to those we saw in our experimental development. Very recently, Dr. Peter Seal from Sydney, Australia has done a trial in, in chickens with mananase with, I'd say different, slightly different results. A used zero to 300 PPM with a fully compliant diet or 50 kilocalorie reduction. And we saw curious things. First of all, the low energy diet performed better than the control diet, fully compliant energy. Increasing of mananase in this diet causes a direct relationship, a linear relationship between the control and 300 ppm. While in the low energy diet, Weight went to 2.8 to 2.93, 100 ppm on the low energy diet. And as far as FCR is concerned, 200 ppm caused a reduction in FCR to 1.29, 35 days. While 100 ppm on the low energy diet caused an increased body weight and a slightly increased FCR. Feed intake had a quadratic response in low energy diets, as you see here, with 385, 385 kilos at the end of the experiment. While if, if feed intake in mananase on a compliant diet had a linear relationship. So we might say that if we want to increase feed performance, Adding 200 ppm mananase will increase body weight and will reduce, as we saw in previous experiments, we reduce feed conversion ratio. But if we take into account the amount of energy detracted from the diet and the body weight increase we have obtained with 100 ppm of mananase, we have to consider carefully if these two factors are able to compensate 
the increase in FCR that we observed in this group. But also, if we measure fat pad, we see that 200 ppm achieves 11.8% fats in the carcass, while the low energy diet is two points less, 9.6. So there is also an effect of energy here that um, implies at the end that fat pad is reduced in these animals. So it's an interesting, interesting way to be a little bit different from the results we obtain in other experiments. And I am still wondering why this is happening. I'm in conversation with Dr. Sell to try to understand or find a reason why these, these animals um, move that way. And finally, we also have done a validation of mananase on swine. In this case, this is on top application. We are right now doing another type of trials with an energy matrix to trying to understand if we can apply the same strategy that we have applied to, um, to chickens in swine. But in this case, we were using 20 day old wind piglets with a, a dose response experiment from zero to 250 at 100 to 150, 200, 250 gram per ton applied on top. In this case, the diet had 20% soybean meal, 44% plus 8% extrude soya, 3480 kilocalories per kilo, digestible energy, 20.2% crude protein, 1.23 digestible lysine. Six repetitions, 28, a single period, 28 days experiment. The results were pretty interesting. Increasing mananase, mananase addition to this diet increased body weight gain, daily gain, ADFI, but caused a quadratic response in FCR with the best at 200 ppm. We, we achieve here 10.8 kilograms body weight gain against 0.1 with a reduction of 1.58 again 1.65. So better growth and decrease FCR. This is more or less what we have seen in, in poultry. So the mode of action of this, of mananase in the intestine in general is pretty similar across the species. And uh, we have several other factors here. There were slightly non-significant increase in dry matter digestibility and in gross energy digestibility, but there was a significant impact in villi height in duodenum and jejunum, which we see here, zero, 150, 200, and 250 with an optimum in 200 ppm being significant different against the control. And in the unum, the, tri, the, the course activity was exactly the same. The lowest was the control and the highest was the 200 ppm uh, application. So looks like the 200 ppm in swine appears to be the optimum, um, the optimum dose. This is the villicrib ratio, both in the ordenum and the unum, and is exactly the same as I've seen here the lowest in the control diet, the highest in the 200 ppm diet. And two extra data on swine activity is IgG. We are talking on uh, immunitary reactions and nutritional interference. We see that IgG in these animals tend to decrease. That is not significant, but it's a trend. Tend to decrease from control diet to 250, having 200 ppm being virtually the same as, as uh, 250. And glucose absorption, that is the interference we talked at the beginning of, me, of my talk with guar gum, glucose absorption is increased as well, significantly over the control when mananase is applied. In this case, it's 4.7 that again matches the uh, Optimum dose appearing to be in all the parameters in um, this trial. We still lack the data for um, energy matrices in, in swine. When these data are available, I will be made them available, of course. And uh, with this, I think that I'm finishing my presentation and I submit to your questions. So thank you very much for your attention today. I hope it's been interesting and thought-provoking 
and I'm open to any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you.